Hey team, welcome back to the basics. So I know it's been a while since I put out a video and that's just because school's been busy and honestly I haven't had as much access to uh, shooting ranges as I'd like and you know just having ammo and stuff to shoot has made that difficult but there are some new developments at this land I have access to down in South Carolina so if everything goes according to plan here in the next few weeks I should have a much more consistent and safe way to shoot more and just put out some better quality shooting content for you guys so stay tuned i wanted to revisit this optic in another review it's been about a year since i did the last one and i've been able to use it quite a bit more since then and i've learned a little bit more about it so i just wanted to do an update and sort of show you guys what my thoughts are in case any of you guys are on the market we're also most of us kind of just at home uh, with not as as much to do because of this whole virus thing so i figured Let's make a video and hopefully somebody will benefit from it. Before I get into the optic, just a quick reminder, this is a VCM 18 inch stainless steel upper, Geisley two stage SSAE trigger on a DPMS lower, nothing else fancy going on inside the rifle. I've got a LaRue SPR 1.5 mount, Silencer Co Omega with a 5.56 end cap, and then just a cheap knockoff Paris bipod I think it's a Blackhawk model that I got at Walmart for like 50 bucks, and this thing has been killing. So, uh, no issues there. And then also just some cheap offset irons that I'm sort of messing around with. Alright, getting into the video, or the, the main content. So, since the last review, this optic has taken this gun out to 600 yards on 1.5 to 2 MOA steel targets easily, with uh, non-match grade ammo sometimes. I've competed in three local two guns, and I've won two out of the three, which is pretty impressive. Um, not because I'm a great shot or anything, and you know it's just a local match, but I've competed against generally the same people at both. Um, I've competed at the same two guns with both Red Dots and this Optic, so I'm sort of competing against the same people, and I'm getting about the same times and having the same performance I've won several others with my red dot as well. So basically what I'm trying to get at is I'm beating people with just straight red dots um, and I'm I'm on par with myself using red dots as well. So I'm definitely not losing just because I'm using this optic and I'm winning when I have a red dot. So we'll get into that more later. Um, I've also just been sort of carrying it around a lot, been doing some recon at the land with the berm developments, taking it in and out of bags, in and out of vehicles, um, just kind of having it with me more, so I've been able to sort of get a feel for how it, the optic is sitting on the rifle. And so because of that, like I said, I have a lot more experience. So um, just to address an initial couple hesitations I had from the first review, the first being battery life. And at first I said I wouldn't necessarily depend on it as a duty gun, battery life per the factory, per night force wasn't supposed to be that great. And I would sort of stand by that to say if you want, obviously if you want to keep your dot on 24-7, then this isn't going to be the thing for you. Um, if you don't need any extra magnification for your duty gun, if you just need a red dot and you're just sort of thinking, oh, I'll get this and then I'll have extra magnification just for whenever, I would still recommend a red dot for duty use. That being said, if you want the extra magnification or if you need it, especially in a law enforcement or military capacity for your PID, um, for your positive identification, or if there's some other reason that you really need the magnification, then I think you could definitely make this work with its battery life for duty or self-defense use. Last time was about, uh, about a year ago, and I've had the same battery in there since. I've used it, like I said, in several two guns. I've sort of practiced with it on my own. I've actually left it on. Um, probably on setting five or six in the safe overnight a couple times. Um, I wish I had more empirical data to share with you as to how long the batteries actually lasted. I don't, but it's lasted me a year and, you know, as long as you are consistently just turning it on and off in between uses, which is super easy to do because they have the off positions in between each on position, then I think you can make the battery last a while. And, uh, Something else I hope to remember to talk about once I get into the reticle close quarters. Worst case scenario, the red dot dies on you, but you've still got these really nice, bold, thick black lines that are sort of pointing right at the center cluster. So as long as the lighting 
isn't too dark, and I'm guessing even if it is, you just activate your flashlight and you're going to see those lines silhouetted, you can still get good accurate hits with those lines, and we'll talk about that later. So it's back on the table for me as like a duty self-defense optic. Just know that you have to be disciplined with your battery conservation, just making sure you're not leaving it on all the time. And probably you're going to want to change the batteries out frequently depending on how much you're using it. Um, but they're pretty cheap and easy to keep keep around, the CR2032s, I believe. Um, I have them. I'm going to start carrying my RMR full-time once I get it back from the shop, getting that thing dropped into my M&P. So those, those two share the same battery, so I'm just going to have a bunch of them sort of in all my bags, and it should be a problem. Um, the other thing, the other hesitation that I've had, which is still sort of a problem, is the center reticle for long-distance shooting. Now, if you remember, and I'll try and put up a picture, the center reticle is very cluttered. Center one and a quarter MOA dot, which is not what you want for precision shooting by any means, and then you've just got sort of this big thick ring around it. So for me, I like to do holdovers at distance with the SPR. Um, if I'm doing true precision work, I always like to dial and then just hold over for windage, but with the SPR, I think doing your holdovers is where it's at, just for speed. Um, if you happen to be holding over and you're shooting at a target that isn't very big, then the center cluster, I found, does tend to make it difficult to have a consistent hold on that target, as well as it prevents you from seeing your splash, which can be problematic. Um, I've switched from a 50-yard zero to a 100-yard zero, so I'm hoping that because of that I'll have more drop, so I'll be able to use that vertical line under the cluster more. And then I'll only have to worry about the center cluster for like maybe one to 300 yards, which should help. Um, and I intend to go out and shoot some smaller targets in that one to 300 yard range once I get this berm developed. Just some like clay pigeons and stuff like that, just to see if the center cluster is still an issue. For me, it has been, it's prevented me from seeing my splash at 400 yards at, at times, especially when I'm zero to, or when I was zero to the 50, 50 200 yard zero. Um, again, I think the 100 yard zero will help that, but just know if you want a really nice, precise, precision optic, this probably isn't what you want. Like I mentioned before, this is a versatile optic. So it's gonna give you a lot of the best of both worlds. For me, I sort of use the Vortex Razor one to six and compared it with this. If you want a really versatile optic that airs on the side of close quarters proficiency, I would maybe go with the Vortex. Um, I actually like this optic better for close quarter stuff than the Vortex, but the Vortex has a better eye box, it has better clarity, so if you're doing a lot of positional stuff and you need a more general room to like move your head around, then you might like the Vortex. Um, also the price points there, it's a little cheaper, so if you don't need quite as much magnification, the Vortex might be the way to go. For this, I wanted something that was versatile that aired on the side of long distance proficiency. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I don't think you lose that much with the with the red dot for close quarters stuff, but I digress. It has continued to be a problem. I intend to um, shoot it some more, specifically in that area where it is a problem, to see if I can work out the kinks. And when I do, I'll let you guys know how it goes. That being said, I've still been able to get plenty of hits from zero to 600 yards, and uh, it's a problem, but you can work around it. Um, if you have any other questions about that, please let me know. Oh, and one thing I should mention, if you're shooting at like, I don't want to, you know, like a man-sized target or even like a hunting uh, sized target, like a deer or something that's a little bigger, then the, the center cluster doesn't matter as much because it's easier to see the bigger target because the center cluster doesn't take up the whole thing. Mainly I'm talking about like low percentage shots, one MOA steal at 400 yards, and you're using the center point of aim to the center cluster to aim. If you're doing your holdovers, it's not a problem. I'll, I'll, I'll don't know if I made that clear or not. Um, so things I've noticed since the last review that I really, really like. I've talked about the battery life. Not really an issue for me, especially in a recreational capacity. In a duty capacity, I'd say it's even less of an issue than I previously thought. Close quarters capabilities. This is the one thing that I've really sort of been like, yeah, this is a good optic. Um, the close quarters capabilities with this optic I think are awesome. Like I mentioned, I'm winning two guns, the same ones, competing against the same people, whether I'm using an EOTech or an Aimpoint or a Trichicon or this thing. So I think for me at least, I'm not losing anything, 
at least that I can tell with this optic compared to a, a red dot. If I were to do them side by side, um, I bet the red dot would still have a little bit of speed, uh, a little bit better eye box stuff going on, but in, in all practical purposes, I'm not noticing it, in a, in a two-gun capacity at, at least. So I wouldn't worry about it too much there. Um, another thing that I really, really like about this, especially compared to the Vortex 1-6, to is that the uh, reticle, if, if your battery happens to die, let's say, and you're just looking through the glass, looking through the tube, you've got those three really nice bold lines that I mentioned that really direct your focus towards the center cluster. And as long as you can see the lights, you know, hit your flashlight, you're going to be silhouetting those lines, you're going to be able to get pretty good, like, chest size shots inside of, I don't know, 20 yards. So it's a really good fail-safe, whereas the Vortex doesn't have that. Their lines, to my memory, are much thinner. And you just don't have that. Additionally, similar to how the EOTech works, where you have the center dot, which is your main point of aim out to like, you know, 50, 200 yards zero, or like 100 yards zero is kind of what I have online for now. You can put that on your target. You're going to be at least a few inches low at, just at uh, close quarters. But if you use the bottom part of the circle, you can actually make that your zero point. Like for mine, the center dot is 100 yard zero. And then inside of 10 yards, that, that little uh, tick on the bottom part of the circle is my point of aim. You can do the same thing with that bottom black line with the Night Force NX-8. The top of that little triangle, more or less, is going to be your point of aim inside of like 10 yards. So it's really, really awesome if you're running close quarter stuff and you just need a general chest sized hit, then just have your hold with your red dot and you're going to be good. If you like need that really low percentage T-zone hit and you just want to be extra sure that you know exactly where that bullet's going inside of, I don't know, 15, 10 yards, depending on the rifle and the ammo and all that. Um, you'd want to confirm this yourself, of course, but just put that bottom black line right on the, the top of the triangle, put that right on your intended point of aim, and that's where your bullet goes. So I don't know if they intended for it to be like that, but I've noticed that you, you can get away with using it, and it's really helped me out in a, in a two gun or two where you you know, sort of need to hit that small A zone target in the head, or just in training, if you're doing some low percentage shots, it really helps out in that capacity. One of the other things I've mentioned um, has been just how lightweight and handy it's been, or that I've needed something that's been lightweight and handy as I've been moving it around and sort of doing some recon and taking it in and out of bags with the vehicle. It's super short. It doesn't hardly come past the receiver at all. It's very lightweight. It sits low to the gun, at least in the, the mount that I have. It's not quite as bulky as like the Attacker series are. Um, even the new Vortex 1 to 10, I think, has a 34 millimeter tube. So this optic fits this gun very well, especially with these accessories that I have on it. It tends to get pretty front heavy. So when I can just sort of pick it up and know that I'm not going to have all of this extra weight in the back, it's really, really nice. It balances the rifle very, very well. When I'm sort of just doing my recon and I'm like trying to get a sense for whether I can see some targets or not at this range. I can hold it up nice and neat. If I'm moving it around the vehicle, getting it in and out of bags, it's not getting snagged on anything. Um, just having it in a slung configuration, if I'm you know, transitioning to pistols or just having it on my body, I don't feel the knobs bumping into me or getting clogged and snagged on stuff. So it's just a really lightweight, handy optic. As far as durability goes, I don't abuse this thing because it's super expensive to me. It's not really my primary duty self-defense optic, so I'm not really concerned about testing it. Um, the attacker, of course, is going to be a little bit more reliable, I think, just because it's more beefy. It was made to a military specifications. I still wouldn't have any issues using this in like a bug out capacity and knowing that it's probably going to stand, stand up to whatever you throw at it. It's a night force. Their company has been making really solid optics for a while. All the times I've banged it around, dropped it, I haven't noticed a shift in zero. Um, I'm not really too concerned about reliability, but for that size and for the light, for the lightweight and the handiness that you get out of it, I think it's a, a stellar optic as far as that goes. Um, I definitely still think it beats the Razor uh, one to six for long range precision shooting. I also think it probably beats the new Razor one to ten depending on if you want uh, mil or MOA reticles. I really think that the mil radian 
one to ten in Vortex, if you're a mill guy, is probably going to be a, a better optic than this for long range at, at least, just because it has a really nice like Christmas tree type reticle, which are awesome. I love them. I wish I could get this optic in that. Um, you're still going to beat them with cost. You're still going to beat the attacker with cost, which has that Christmas tree reticle as well. Um, but yeah, I think if you're looking for a long distance reticle, uh, and it's between those two really expensive options or some of the other really expensive options out there are like a Vortex, and you don't want to look at anything cheaper than like a Vortex Razor 1-6, to six, this is a pretty good option. If you want to do close quarter stuff, you don't want to spend the money or let's just say you still want to do long distance stuff and you don't want to spend the money for this and you can get a razor for cheap, go for it. You're still going to be able to learn that kit and use it effectively. Um, I just think this is a superior optic for long distance shooting for the reasons I've mentioned. Aside from that, um, I just really like it. I think it looks awesome. I love the Night Force brand. Um, not that I don't love Vortex. I think their warranty and all of the Vortex stuff that I've dealt with and continue to deal with are awesome, top-notch stuff. I just love how tactile and solid the turrets are. I love the reticle for the most part. I love how it includes the little handle here for you to dial your uh, magnification ring. It's super smooth, especially compared to the Vortex Razors. That thing is a beast to turn. This thing is super smooth. Um, Oh, the illumination setting on the Vortex Razor is also kind of a pain. You have to pull it out and turn it, and it, it's kind of a, annoying. This thing doesn't shift on you unless you intend it to, but it's very just solid, very easy to activate. And it's just a really great optic. Um, I was like, dang, when I first bought this thing, I dropped you know a little bit of coin on it. I still got it for a deal, but still, anything above $1,000 is like, what did I just do? And I've used it enough, and I've enjoyed it enough to where I'm actually quite happy that I did it. Um, I'm excited to continue to shoot it, especially running it through some close quarters stuff, continuing to test that out, and primarily starting to dial in my dope on the rifle and the optic itself, just to really confirm ammo and all that, but then also to see, like I said, does the center cluster really matter? Does it really impact me in those distances where I have to sort of use the center cluster point of aim, point of impact? So uh, stay tuned. I'm going to keep shooting this thing. Let me know if you have any questions. If there's something I didn't talk about that you're curious about, let me know. That way when I go out and shoot it, I can test it for you. And thanks for watching, guys.